Let's look at some ways in which relational data might be used. Now suppose we already know that we've got one table called flights that has information about the individual flights as well as the origin and destination of each of the flights. And then we have another uh, table uh, called uh, air, uh, uh, airports, right, which has information about each individual airport and uh, information about uh, the airport's latitude and longitude. Okay, so now suppose we wanted to draw approximately the route each plane flies from its origin to destination. In other words, we just want to show the origin in terms of its latitude, longitude, the destination in terms of its lat latitude, longitude, and connect them with the line. Right, so what variables would you need and which tables would you need to combine? Okay, so it'll be a good idea for you to uh, actually use, uh, uh, take a look at the structure of each of those tables, which is, uh, you know, looking at all the attributes, not just those shown in the diagram, because the diagram is incomplete. It doesn't show all the attributes. It shows only attributes used to link various uh, tables. So it'll be a good idea for you to take a look at uh, the actual tables and see how you might approach this. Right, so again, I, I remind you, uh, you can load the thing by saying library and YC flights 13. And then after that, uh, you can look at, you know, the individual tables by doing question mark without any space, question mark flights, question mark airports, uh, question mark weather, etc. And you'll get an idea of all the columns in each of those tables, right? So to take a flight and to find uh, its, uh, the latitude and longitude of its origin and the latitude and longitude of its destination. Right? We're not saying how exactly you'll do this and so on, but just uh, to get the required information, what tables would you need to combine and which variables would you need? Now, I would say just think about it a little bit before you look, proceed and look at the answer. Okay, so stop the video and go ahead. Okay, I assume you have uh, stopped the video, gone and uh, taken a shot at answering the question. So essentially, in order to draw that uh, route, you would need to know the latitude and longitude of the origin airport and the latitude and longitude of the destination airport. Once you have that, you you might be able to draw the uh, the lines. Okay. So obviously, uh, for a planes, uh, we'll we'll need to know the uh, because we are saying for each plane, right? And the individual plane information is coming from uh, the planes. So the tail number of the plane would be required. Flights. Obviously, that's what is going to tell us uh, for each plane, which origin airport, destination airport it did in each of its flights. So you'll need that information. And of course, we need the latitude and longitude of the origin airport and the destination airport. And that is going to come from the airports table. Okay, so these are the information that, uh, these are the tables that contain the required information. So we would need some way by which we can get all this required information and then do the processing. Okay, so that's really what we are going to look at uh, in this portion uh, dealing with relational data, right? How do you take information which is in multiple tables and combine them together for appropriate, uh, for specific purposes? Okay, so again, we are saying use the relationship between, uh, the relationship between weather and airports is not shown in the diagram. Is there a relationship? If so, how will you, if so, how will you show it? Okay. Uh, so weather and airports are not connected. So again, I'm just going to go back to the diagram. So here's the diagram. Okay, so what we're talking about is uh, the relationship between weather and flights is shown. Airlines and flights, planes and flights. So in some sense, flights is treated as the central table and relationships uh, from other tables to flights is clearly shown. Right, whereas other information uh, is not shown. So for example, weather. Right, we already know that the origin in weather is essentially an airport. It has the airport code. So clearly that is connected with the airports table, right? So in order to show this relationship, we have to definitely link up the FAA field, just like it's linked here to origin. We need to link it up to origin here too. Okay, uh, now the, uh, uh, the weather information uh, in this uh, table is actually shown only for the origin airports. Okay, maybe that's why they chose to call the field as origin and not just FAA, because we don't have information in that particular table uh, about weather for all the airports. It's only for those three origin airports, the New York City area airports. Okay, so that's probably why they chose to call it origin. In any case, to do that, we would have to connect these two things. And that's what the question is talking about. Right, so really we need to have this connection, which was not shown, 
uh, and that's the new connection that needs to be shown. Once again, we've put the semicircle here because uh, it's the primary key here and it's the foreign key here. In other words, for every FAA or every airport code, there would be only one row here in this particular table. But of course, that's going to occur many, many times in this particular table. That's why the arrow is on this side and the semicircle is on this side. As I was mentioning earlier, weather table contains only information for the origin airports, the three NYC airports, which is Newark, LaGuardia, and JFK. Right? If, suppose it contained weather records for all airports in the USA, then what additional relation would it define with flights? Okay, Which is that we've got weather right now connected with, as you can see here, weather is connected with year, month, day, hour, and origin airport. Okay, that's it. Because the weather table contains only information for all the origin airports, and that's presumably why I think they call this field as origin, just to make it clear, right? So, for example, if you looked at the airport in Washington, D.C. area, D.C.A., that won't have any information in this weather table because right now this table only has information about the New York airports. Question is, if it, it, if it did have information about all airport weather, then what other connection would it have between weather, would exist between weather and flights? So obviously, if it had information about all, all airports, not just the New York airports, then obviously we would have to connect it to destination as well. Right? So to find the weather at the origin, you would use year, month, day, hour, flight, and origin. To find the weather at the destination, you would have to use year, month, day, hour, flight, and destination. Okay, So that would be the additional connection. Uh, so you would have to show this connection as going here, and one more connection going to all of those things plus the destination and not the origin. So that's what the question was really talking about. Okay, so the additional relation it would have to define is a connection with the destination. <clears throat> okay, so we know that some days of the year are special and fewer people than usual fly on them. I don't know specifically which days these are, but let's say there are such days when uh, people, uh, many people don't fly. Okay, so maybe on Christmas Day or uh, on special days or Thanksgiving Day, for example, people may not fly because uh, you know they they want to spend uh, the 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 time with their family. Okay, or it could be some uh, superstitious things like Friday the thirteenth. People are scared; they don't fly. Okay, so those kinds of things. Okay, so there are some such special days. Uh, the point is, suppose you want to represent this information, right? I'm not talking about how to find those special days from the data that's given. We could do that, right? If you could look at uh, the number of flights on specific days of a year, and then you can sort it and find out which are the days in which there are very few flights. That you could find out. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about these known special days. So how would you represent that information in the table, in the form of a separate of a data frame, right? How will you capture that information in this scheme of things, right? So what I think uh, we can do to represent that is simply to have another table, a separate table completely whose name let's say is uh, you know rare days or uh, light days or whatever you want to call it okay but the point is that would need to have information only to identify those specific days right let's say uh, we've got 10 such days then your table would have simply 10 rows and each row would have just one column just to say year month day or not even year just month and day to identify uh, you know, which days of the year are those specific days. That's all you would need. You don't need any other attributes like, you know, how many people flew on those days or, or whatever it is, right? Because all of that additional information can be got from the other tables, right? So you just need to identify those days, period, right? And in order to identify that, all you would need is just a month, day, just two columns, Right? And if there are 10 such days, there would be only 10 rows. That table would be a really small table, just indicating which are those light days. Okay, So that's all you need. It would suffice to represent just the days alone, month and day. All other information can be picked up from other tables. Okay, So this table would connect by month and day to, flight and, to flights and weather tables. Okay, uh, So what I'm doing here is just giving you an idea of how 
you know, when you have a lot of information that is represented across separate tables, instead of everything being just in one single table, we are looking at how to understand that and so on. Okay, and of course, this is something that uh, those who have done my earlier course have already looked at. Okay, now, of course, when we say something is a primary key, like we did, for example, here, right, we said that FAA is a primary key in the airports table, which means that every, uh, for that particular column, no value can occur more than once. Of course, it makes sense, right, because you're describing airports, you need only one row for every specific airport. So, for example, you need one row for uh, the JFK airport and all the other columns in that row will describe everything about that airport, you know, its latitude, its longitude, uh, the year in which it was opened, etc, etc. Its uh, actual name, right, because JFK is the key, but the actual name would be John F. Kennedy Airport, International Airport or whatever, right. So, you need only one row for each airport. So, in that sense, FAA is the primary key, okay. Similarly, for the flights table, uh, for the weather table, right, you're talking about every day of the year, and um, broken up into by hour and for every hour uh, of course we also have the location for this combination we need only one uh, one row right so if you take for example 2013 march 25th uh, 10 am at ewr right so for that you will have the temperature the pressure the wind speed the wind direction all of that information right so those would all be different columns uh, but what would uniquely identify a particular row is this combination, right? So in other words, within the weather table, you will not have uh, two rows that have identical values for all of these attributes. That won't happen, okay? So that's what is the notion of a primary key that you have here, right? And the question was, <clears throat> uh, of course, you want to, we know that this is the notion of a primary key. But just to make sure that we understand, because when you look at the data frame, uh, the description of the data, it's not going to tell you what is unique and which is the primary key. Okay, it's up to us to understand the scenario and say, okay, this is what is going to be unique. Of course, the diagram we have drawn based on our common sense understanding. So you want to check that the primary key is indeed unique. You can easily do that. So for example, in the planes table, we are saying tail num is the primary key. So we can obviously count the, you know, for each tail num, we can count how many times it occurs. It should occur only once, right? And of course, instead of, you know, the planes table has 4,000 rows. So there's no sense in uh, us going and checking that every one of those 4,000 rows has an, uh, the count as one. Instead, we can just say, uh, filter the table and get me only those rows for which count is more than one, right? Because when you do count, what you're going to get is a resulting table with a new column called n that shows you the count, right? So in other words, what this thing is going to do, when you say plane count tail num, you're going to get for every tail number, how many times it occurs, okay? Uh, within the planes table. Now we expect, of course, that it'll occur only once, right? But in case it occurs more than once, we want to find those rows in which it occurs. So when we say filter n greater than one, so we are saying first count for every tail number, how many times it occurs, and give me only those rows in which uh, the tail numbers have more than one row in the planes table. If you do this, of course, you will find that there's nothing. You know, there's uh, that nothing comes out. You get you get a table with only zero rows. So that tells you, okay, indeed, tail number is a primary key here. Similarly, for weather, right? We already discussed that this combination is what is unique. So if you say count this, and then filter by n greater than one. Right. Once again, we are saying is uh, for every combination of this year, month, day, hour, origin, find out how many rows are there in the weather table. Of course, because it's a primary key, we expect that there would be only one row for each of them. So we are saying, okay, filter and show me only those cases in which the number of rows is actually greater than one, which we will find there's nothing of. Okay. So the primary key uh, in both of uh, both of these cases, our assumption that these are the primary keys is indeed valid. Okay, of course, uh, just because something has only one occurrence doesn't make it a primary key. You know, we have to define it based on our understanding of the situation, but then we are just verifying it with this understanding.